the size and especially the height of a person is normally ascribed to their genes. However, the genes are normally responsible for just the potential size of the person. Various environmental and biological factors determine the potential is actually achieved, but in some circumstances it's actually exceeded. Whilst there isn't a single gene for height, there are a number of genes which work together to be responsible for the potential height of the individual. However, in order to achieve this potential, the person needs to receive adequate levels of nutrition, especially when they're younger. A key part of nutrition is enough protein in the diet, but low levels of calcium, vitamins A and D will also prevent the person from attaining the maximum height potential. Difference in childhood diet is clearly illustrated in the population differences between North and South Korea. The populations in each country are virtually genetically identical, with many families having members in both countries. However, the children in South Korea are on average about an inch and a half taller than their counterparts in North Korea. This height difference is due to nutrition has actually been reflected in many other Asian nations. Many of these countries were assumed to have a genetic characteristic that meant their populations were genetically smaller than other parts of the world. However, as childhood nutrition has improved in these countries, the average height in these countries has actually risen to be comparable with most other countries in the world. It is possible though, under some circumstances, for a person to exceed their genetic potential if their pituitary gland produces an excess of the human growth hormone. The excess of the human growth hormone is normally a result of an overacted hypothalamus. It can be related to genetics, but also can be related to a range of diseases, including a tumour on the pituitary gland. The excess of the growth hormone can affect humans in a similar way to plants being affected by an excess of their growth hormone, auxin, which can be produced if the plant is actually kept in the dark. This results in the plant growing fast and tall, but that growth can result in the plant not being strong enough to support the weight of the plant. In similar ways, humans with an excess of growth hormone can suffer with major issues in their skeleton, especially in their joints, along with significant heart and circulation issues, all of which normally result in a much shortened lifespan. Now, one environmental issue with size, which has mostly been overlooked until recently, is access to oxygen. And normally the oxygen supply for humans isn't restricted enough to have any impact on growth. But at altitude, it's possible there might not be an ideal amount of oxygen available for the body to use. In recent studies, the restriction in oxygen seems to have a rather curious effect on the growth in arms, whilst hand growth and upper arm growth appear only to be marginally affected by living at altitude. The length of the forearm is considerably shorter at high altitude and at lower levels. This unusual pattern of shortening of the limb appears to also be the case in the lower leg as well. There have been some theories as to why this thrifty phenotype is choosing this part of the limb to be denied resources to grow to its normal length, relating to the conservation of heat. However, it doesn't really make that much sense as to why this part of the limb should be reduced in size rather than a more overall reduction in size. Instead, this limb reduction may go further back in our genetic past when we were running around on four legs rather than being upright. A reduction in the lower limb size would be a way of conserving resources in a challenging environment, but it would also mean that our four-footed primate ancestors would be shorter be considerably more stable on the dangerous slopes of mountains found at higher altitudes, which certainly would be a competitive advantage in such a challenging environment.